Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Have you ever thought about this biblical character named Balaam? Who was he? Where did he come from? And what was his background? What was his line of work? And what was the result of his teachings? Welcome to Truth in History. Today I would like to talk about Balaam and try to answer the questions that I just asked. He's somewhat of a mysterious character, and there's been a lot of questions asked and a lot of speculation concerning Balaam. How did he prophesy? Was it a real prophecy? Was it fake? Or what was his means of what we would call inspiration? Well, we're going to try to explore this man today and find out who he really was and what was his line of work. First of all, I want to, I want to start with the three things that defines Balaam, three things that are mentioned in the, uh, in the New Testament. Number one is found in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 15. Now in 2 Peter chapter 2, the, the writer is, that is Peter, he's talking about false prophets. Because in verse number 1, 2 Peter chapter 2, he says, But there were false prophets also among the people. So he sets the stage for everything that he says uh, following that statement. So he's talking about false prophets. Then we come down to verse number 15, and it says, Which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. So, first of all, I have, en I have entitled this program and this, this study, Balaam the Prophet for Prophet. Balaam the Prophet for Prophet. So, in verse number 15, it first tells us the character of this man. He loved the wages of unrighteousness. That's the way of Balaam. Number two concerning Balaam is found in the book of Jude. Jude, verse 11. Jude is also talking about false prophets. And he says in verse 11, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam. First of all, Peter talked about the way of Balaam. Now, he, Jude is talking about the error of Balaam for reward. Now, what is the error of Balaam? He ran greedily. He ran greedily after the reward or after the payment. Number three is found in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Now we have the doctrine of Balaam. First we had the way of Balaam, the error of Balaam, and now the doctrine of Balaam. Now what was the doctrine of Balaam? To cast a stumbling block in Israel. 
so that Israel would sin against God. In order to understand this man, and it's my purpose on these programs in this series to delve into what this man was like, what he did, his inspiration, and I want the listener or the viewer, I want you to to learn something. It's not my purpose just to preach to you and to get you all hyped up and emotionally on a high. That's not my purpose. But my purpose is for teaching, instruction, so that we can be aware of Satan's devices. And in order to be aware of Satan's devices, you have to know his tactics. And Satan works through people. Satan does not come to us as this guy in a red suit with a long tail, with horns, and carrying a pitchfork. No, he comes as an angel of light. So in order to understand Balaam, let's go back to the book of Numbers. And I'm, in this series, I'm going to have to read a lot of Scripture. And it will tell the story and help explain the whole meaning of what's taking place. Now, in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, 23, and 24 will be our text. So, it's going to take more than one program to explain Balaam and a lot of reading. But the setting is that Israel, being led by Moses, they were in the wilderness and they were traveling towards the promised land. And they came to the land of Canaan, the border of Canaan. Joshua is the man that led them over into Canaan land. But two and a half tribes stayed on the east side of Jordan. And in their wars, they defeated the king of the Amorites. They defeated the king of the Amorites. And they also defeated the king of Bashan. That's in chapter 21 of Numbers. So Balak, who was the king of Moab, saw how the Lord defeated Israel's enemies and just crushed them. Well, this frightened old Balak, the king of Moab. It frightened him, so he called on somebody, and he called on Balaam. And this is an, an interesting point. How did he know to call Balaam? Did Balaam already have a reputation for witchcraft, divining, or even, as we say, prophesying? Why Balaam? Because Balaam had a reputation in that part of the world for prophesying or divining or saying what he was hired to say. Numbers chapter 22. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people because there were many. And Moab 
was distressed because of the children of Israel. Now, in verse number 4, Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. He's talking about this congregation of Israel. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I would that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. Now, in verse number 6, it says, He called Balaam to curse Israel, because Balak, king of Moab, knew, already knew, that Balaam had the power to bless people, and they were blessed, to curse others, and they were cursed. He already had that reputation. Now, Moabites, the people of Moab, were Hebrews, but they were not from Abraham. They were from Abraham's brother through Lot, because Lot, you remember the story, he went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, he escaped, and he gave, he sired two children, Moab and Ammon, by his daughters. And Moab was from the line of Lot. But Balaam well, was an Edomite. And I want to, I want to read, I want to read you this. In Genesis 36 and verse 31. Genesis 36, 21. Now, this means a lot. 36, 21. It says, and 20, uh, 36, 31. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. And Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom. Beor, that was Balaam's father. So he was an Edomite from the line of Esau. And it was prophesied, it was prophesied that God would have war with Amalek, who was the grandson of Esau from generation to generation. In Exodus chapter 17, this is what it says in verse 14 through 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, and Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now, in Genesis chapter number 27, we read this. 
And, and this is extremely important because this helps to define the nature of Balaam. In Genesis 27, we know the story how Jacob deceived his father Isaac, uh, and he got the birthright. And then Esau came thinking that he was going to receive the birthright, and he did not, and he was angry. And this is what it says in Genesis 27, 39. And Isaac his father answered Esau, and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, that is, Jacob. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Verse number 41, And Esau hated Jacob. Keep that in mind. Esau hated Jacob. And Balaam was from Esau. Balaam was from Esau. That's an important point to remember because who says there's not two seed lines in the earth? A good and an evil. And Esau was the evil line. Now, I want to read a verse in the New Testament, John chapter 15. Now remember, in Genesis it said, Esau hated Jacob. Now, has that hatred ever been rescinded? Has it ever decreased? Jesus was speaking in John chapter 15, and He said, They hated Me without a cause. They, referring to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the elders, the chief priests, is there any correlation whatsoever between Esau hating Jacob and these religious leaders of Judaism in Jesus' day, hating the Christ, Jesus, the Son of God? Is there any relation? Now, we must admit, folks, this is not, Christianity is not a recreation room. It's a battlefield. It's a battleground. We are at war. Look around us. And this is all in the book of God. It's in the Bible. So we find Balaam from Edom, the seed line that hated Jacob. Moab was from Lot. And Midian, Midian was also from Abraham, but not through Sarah, but it was Abraham's offspring. Let's read on. It says, and in chapter number 22, And he sent messengers therefore to Balaam. He says, The son of Beor to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of children of his people. Of the children of his people. Now, the name of Balaam, the meaning of the name, is means not of this people. In other words, he was a foreigner to Israel. Not of Israel. Balaam was a foreigner. He was considered a foreigner because he was of the line of Esau. And he said, Balaam 
or Balak, the king of Moab, says, call for this man. He has a good reputation. Whoever he blesses is blessed. Whoever he curses is cursed. Let's go back to Numbers 22, verse 7. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination. What were these rewards? They were wages to give or to offer to Balaam for his services. That's why I call him a prophet for profit. Folks, whenever you meet a quote prophet that's in it for profit, there's something wrong. Something bad wrong. If you ever meet a mercenary minded preacher, back off. Keep your eyes open. They went with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam, and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent them unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covers the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. God's first command, His initial command, command to Balaam, do not go. Do not go. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, they went into Balak and said, Balak refuses to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes, more, and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said, Thus saith Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee unto great honor, and will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray, curse me this people." First of all, the ambassadors of of Balak took wages. And now, the second time they came to Balaam, they came with a promise that he would receive honor and glory. Money, power, honor. You see how this story is developing? And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore I pray you, tarry ye here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me. The Lord had already told him what to do. Why is Balaam inquiring again? Why is Balaam going to the Lord Because Balaam, why is he going the second time? Because Balaam is a conniver. And the Lord knew that he was a false prophet all along. But yet the Lord dealt with him because there's something about a false prophet that there's a pretense of honesty about him. There's a pretense of legitimacy about Balaam. So he says, I'm going to talk to the Lord. The Lord gave him his initial command, but he goes back in time. It could have been months later that he went back to the Lord, thinking, you know, maybe the Lord might change his mind. Now, this is um, 
first wages, money, and now honor and glory in a nation of Moab? Let me read on. And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. Now, you may ask the question, why did God give him permission to go? The first command was, do not go. But yet the Lord, the second time Balaam entreated the Lord, the Lord told Balaam, you can go. It's the overriding will of man. The Lord will say, okay, if you go, go ahead. It's the same with you, me, any preacher, any apostle or prophet or pastor or minister. We start out um, with, the, with, the, with the determination, I'm going to follow the Lord and say what the Lord says for me to do. I'm not going to deviate. I'm not going to compromise. But as life goes on and offers come our way, then it's easy to say, now, Lord, let me ask about this. Let me ask you about this offer. Can I go this far? That's all. I'm just going to associate with this group over here that compromises somewhat, but they're not, they're not devils. They're not evil people, but they are compromisers. They're, they're liberals. Uh, but it won't hurt. You know, I, I, can, I can handle it. The Lord says, okay, if that's what you want, you go ahead. If that's what you want, okay, Balaam, you go ahead. But I'm telling you, don't curse my people, Israel. Don't curse them. And he says, that's not a problem. I can handle that. But you see, the self-will of man entreated the Lord. Actually, the Lord is letting Balaam have his way, but under the Lord's control. Folks, we have a magazine at this ministry. If you never receive one free of charge, you send us, contact us, we'll send it to you free of charge. The Lord give us wisdom and understanding in this day and age in which we live to detect false prophets among us. For any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you and may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry. Truth in history, where the word of God is not bound.